Hi, I'm Ed Loftus. I'm a gastroenterologist at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. Um, I work in the Inflammatory Bowel Disease Clinic, and so I'm a gastroenterologist who specializes in taking care of patients with Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. And I wanted to talk to you today about a recent article that was published about a drug called vetolizumab. So vetolizumab is a biologic, it's a monoclonal antibody against a molecule called alpha-4-beta-7 integrin. And this molecule interacts with a particular type of cell adhesion molecule. So the integrin sits on the white blood cell. The adhesion molecule sits on the endothelial cell, which is a type of cell that lines the blood vessels. And the interesting thing about the particular cell adhesion molecule that it interacts with is that it's only found in the gut, or it's basically found in the gut. It's found to a much lesser degree in a few other areas of the body. So this is a biologic that interferes with the ability of the white blood cell to leave the blood vessel and go into the tissue and cause inflammation. And because the target molecule, that interaction is gut-specific, it's a relatively gut-specific or gut-selective biologic agent. And so this drug um, was approved by the FDA about two years ago for both Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. And recently in the uh, journal called GUT, which is always a great name for a journal, uh, there was a safety study published about this uh, molecule. And so they took the results of six different clinical trials, two phase two studies and four phase three studies. And this involved over 2,800 patients that, who were followed for a total of over uh, 4,000 person years and they just analyzed the safety of this medication and compared it to uh, the patients who were treated with placebo. And what they found was is that, I mean, essentially there was no uh, serious or significant safety signal with this medication. In other words, the rate of adverse events and the rate of serious adverse events was similar compared to the patients treated with the actual drug and the patients treated with placebo. Uh, there was no significant differences in those groups. In fact, in the ulcerative colitis trials, there were, there were fewer serious adverse events in the patients treated with the drug compared to placebo. And then when they broke it down to look at specific types of adverse events, they looked at overall infections. Uh, there was really, there was essentially no difference between the two groups. When they looked at serious infections, no difference between the two groups. So it really looked like a safe drug. When they did a um, what we call a multivariate analysis where you uh, look at everyone who had a serious infection and then you do something called a, a regression analysis to look back at the factors that were sort of predictive of or at least significantly associated with a serious infection. In the ulcerative colitis group, the things that stood out were that previous anti-TNF use increased your risk of a serious infection as well as narcotic analgesic use. In the Crohn's disease patients, younger age was sort of protective against the development of a serious infection, whereas, again, previous anti-TNF use increased the risk of a serious infection, and narcotic analgesic use did so as well. Uh, the other specific safety signal that was studied in this um, paper was a neurologic complication called progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy, or PML. And PML is a a viral infection in the brain that can cause serious neurologic uh, disability. And the reason it was studied specifically for this drug was that a predecessor drug called natalizumab, which is not gut specific, is associated with that infection. But the good news is because of the gut specificity of this drug, in those 2,800 patients there wasn't a single case of PML. And it, based on the previous drug's experience, if it had the same risk as the previous drug, you would have expected to have seen multiple cases by now. So it's kind of reassuring. We haven't seen any cases of PML, this neurologic side effect, with vetalizumab. The other uh, adverse event that was studied was malignancy. Um, less than 1% of the patients on this drug got malignancy. The rate, the incidence rate of getting a malignancy was like, one in a thousand, and, and it was not significantly different from placebo. So again, reassuring. And in fact, when this drug was approved by the FDA, it did, does not carry any 
black box warnings, which is unlike some of the other biologics we have, which have black box warnings for you know, malignancy or serious infections or tuberculosis. And so I think this study just solidified the fact that um, this gut selective biologic appears to be uh, fairly safe for patients with inflammatory bowel disease. That doesn't mean the story is over. Sometimes it takes a few years after drugs get commercially approved for us to see a safety signal. So we have to keep you know, being vigilant and watching for um, issues. Um, but it was reassuring, and so um, I think this will eventually, um, you know, be a beneficial uh, factor for this particular uh, medication. Thank you very much.